So JavaScript NZ aims to uh, provide and foster an open and welcome uh, ways to grow and educate developers around New Zealand in JavaScript, essentially. Yeah! I love doing that. You're just like... See, I'm, I literally don't have to be doing anything special. I can just mash the keys. Right? Like, a lot of people use Express. Just gonna leave that there. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, when you're looking at code, sometimes you need to actually run the code before you judge it, right? So I'm gonna show you my very first bit, I'm gonna show you a snippet of my very first bit of JavaScript ever. Ever. Now, here you're gonna see the little hanging uh, new line curly brace things. Uh, this is very context dependent. You need to understand what all of this stuff means. There's more than a few parameters that are being sent through functions. It's kind of gross. I get that. Uh, when I first started in this industry, I said, you know, hey, you know, I want to work on the internet. How hard can that possibly be? Uh, JavaScript? I'll learn some JavaScript. I was like, you can actually see in here that I was before this, I was writing C and Python, right? Like there's some like weird underscores and then like all sorts of things. And I was like, JavaScript, how hard can that be? No big deal. I submitted it for a web dev job and I got immediately rejected. They were like, yeah, no, not a chance. Uh, let me show you what happens when you actually run this code. This is a fully articulated three dimensional hand. I was a roboticist before I came into web, de web dev. Like, yeah, I know, I know some of you are looking at the hand and going, ow, 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 ow. Uh. <laughs> the human is possessed with a consuming impulse to seek the reactor. Sabotage, escape. The rats exhibit a basic flocking behavior where they cluster and move together as a group while maintaining some separation from their friends. The killer rats have the same base behavior, but are driven to seek the human and devour his flesh. <laughs> Both basic. And we need to leverage sandboxing. Um, and one approach I'd like you to think about is using browser profiles. So probably if you are like many people, your browser profiles are like this. You just have the one browser profile you use for everything. Uh, consider putting a separate profile for each sensitive task you do, so one for your banking, uh, one for your production environment, one for your dev environment, and then um, you do switch between them like they're windows um, in your browser, but the cookies, the processes that run on the operating system, everything is completely separated. Um, so you've got quite... Uh, so 9 a.m., we, we introduce a new concept. Uh, this will often be what we call a first pass. We don't go into a whole lot of detail about this. We'll then start to demo uh, the, the exercise or the challenge for that morning. Uh, the challenge itself will be, um, will be of, often be of two types. There'll be, a, there'll be a toy example which demonstrates the concept. There'll be, then it will either be, there'll be a code base which you'll have to extend. Uh, it could be a CRUD app, maybe one of the, one of the, the C's or the R's or the U's or the D's or the S's uh, are written and you have to extend and create the rest of it or there'll be a just user stories. You'll have to build the app from scratch. You have to meet those user stories. It's often good to switch back and forth between those two things. Sometimes they'll be pairing. Uh, sometimes they'll be working alone. It, it depends. Uh, then there's lunch. And then after lunch, well, often yoga as well in between these two things. After lunch, uh, I, like to do, I like to do mob program. I'm a huge fan of mob programming. The reason why is that, and you can do this with a small cohort, is that you, what you do is you set, uh, you, you pull down a branch of what they've been working on in the morning, and then you set a timer, and so everybody, you set up a hot station, and we put the code up on the screen, and then we set the timer for five minutes, and everybody cycles through the hot seat um, for that five minutes, and we continue working on somebody's branch, continue to try to do that challenge. The reason I like this is that I'm not there at the front of the class delivering the content. What happens 
is that the students themselves are starting to play a more active role. Less so. So this is what my work ended up with from our Keatow palette. Here's what it looks like in all the different forms for colorblind users. Awesome, people can actually read it. Great result. So if we've got color now, what else do we have? So line charts are the hardest. These are all really quick, don't worry. Um, be smart about your legend labels, right? If possible, put your legend labels by the lines. Good for everyone, reduces cognitive load. Okay, you don't have to then be like, legend, math, legend, math, right? Makes it a little bit easier so that you don't have to flip between the two. Um, otherwise, if you need to have a legend that's separate, make sure that your legend order at whatever end it is of your chart matches the order of the lines. Okay, so again, you're just reducing the reliance on just having color. You use either order or use position on the chart. You can also use interactivity to help. This is from the New Zealand Herald Insights. Um, they use interactivity to show uh, which you know, line is being used and show a value for that line. Not great for keyboard accessibility, so just bear that in mind. Um, also isn't great if people are going to want to compare multiple lines at the same time because their cognitive load increases as they need to retain the information from the label. But works for some types of things. Task runners and bundlers are different beasts. Task runners are a really good way to get started um, if you just want to make all your files a little bit smaller and better for, uh, for shipping. Um, but a bundler will really help you optimize your code and make sure you're following those trees and only putting in the code that you really, really need. Um, it also lets you really highly customize, so you can do things like making sure that your icons are put in as base64 encoded strings, whereas your larger images are left out and loaded externally. You can do a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, Webpack's minimum requirements are actually really, really small. Despite what you'll find online, it all looks very intimidating. It is actually very easy to start out. And as I showed you, you can just bundle the JavaScript and stop there. That is still a really good place to start. Um, loaders. So loaders can be used to pass non-JavaScript files to your bundler. The loaders are all about knowing how to read certain file types. And plugins can do some extra cool stuff um, that, you know, we only just touched on it today. There's a lot of really, really cool ones out there. Um, but something to keep in mind is that uh, while one small tweak in an algorithm could inadvertently aid in the spread of false information, one report with a good visualization that advocates for better hygiene standards in hospitals can save lives. Or, uh, the JavaScript bundle being built, and then at that stage, it rendered out all of the static files. And that's it so far. Lambda at Edge is the, uh, so when we say Edge at AWS, we mean Edge locations, and we mean uh, a point of presence for our, our uh, content delivery network, which is called CloudFront, okay? And I double check. I'm sorry, there, there is no CloudFront location in uh, New Zealand, but uh, I think uh, there's Sydney and Melbourne, I think. So it's not too far. And so basically, you can now run Lambda functions on the edge locations, right? Uh, and why would you do that? Well, you could do a HTTP header customization, right, for every incoming or outgoing. Uh, HTTP request going through or, or coming from your web app. You could manipulate your HTTP headers. You could do A-B testing. You could inject ads. Uh, you could do authentication, traffic filtering, etc. Well, anything that you want to do as soon as possible before that traffic hits your web app, right? You don't need to bring it to uh, the actual origin to, uh, to get things done. And of course, you can do that already, but uh, you know, that usually involves writing, engineering, uh, rules or load balancer rules or, uh, you know, black magic uh, request manipulation in your web app. And you first need to understand our attackers and what their workflow looks like. In order to beat your enemy, you must understand your enemy. So in my book, I work through um, the process that uh, your attacker is, is are very likely to take. And yeah, so basically their workflow. And I've got heaps of hands-on examples and that sort of thing about how they're going to attack you. The five stages of attacker are all covered in there. So we then take what we've learned from the red team and create a set of development-related processes and practices, which we then apply to your scrum team, also known as the blue team in security speak, or your other defending team. That's educating and empowering you. We bring the security focus from the most expensive place. That when you're building in the workplace, you're trying to solve a problem. They're 
complex communication sort of chains around it, requirements, you know, Chinese whispers, multiple people trying to uh, express their, you know, their, their ideation, which has flown into something you're building. And that it's easy to get that wrong. Uh, and uh, the committee um, are going to be having some talks about what we can do in the future. And if you have got that little spark in your brain that's saying, maybe I could step up, um, maybe I've got some friends that will help me, and maybe we could bring this thing to Christchurch or Auckland, uh, Dunedin, uh, Hamilton, wherever, you name it, uh, we may well be looking for some applications for that. Um, in fact, uh, I've already got a GitHub issue, uh, so you can comment on there. <laughs> All right, so that was nz.jscon. Thank you, everybody, so much for showing up.